I've been using smart locks on my home for about four years now. With so many options to choose from, it can be difficult to know what to look for in a smart lock. I'm gonna compare three different smart locks to help you decide the features that you want and what type of smart lock may be best suited for you. As a bonus, I'm also going to compare these to a non-smart digital keypad lock in case that is best suited for your situation. Let's do this. Smart locks are not all made the same. Differences may include how you unlock it, keypad with physical buttons, a glass keypad without buttons, biometrics such as fingerprint, a mechanical key, and more. How it connects. Does it use Wi-Fi? A built-in or a separate module? Does it use Z-Wave, which requires a Z-Wave hub, or Bluetooth? What it connects with. Home Assistant, Apple HomeKit, Amazon, Google Assistant, smart things, how well it works, the noise level, the reliability, the responsiveness, and finally price. I'm going to review three smart locks across each of these dimensions. Let's start with the Ultralock U-Bolt Pro Wi-Fi. This lock offers maximum versatility in terms of ways to open it. It has a keypad with a physical buttons, a fingerprint sensor, and a hidden mechanical key slot. You can also lock and unlock using the UTEC smartphone app. The lock connects to my home via Wi-Fi using a separate module located within a few feet of the door. It works natively with Amazon, Google, and SmartThings. I got this on sale for $133, but it usually costs about $200. This lock offers a really good value if you can find it on sale like I did. I like the versatility in terms of ways to unlock it and that the mechanical key slot is hidden for a very discreet look. Now I bought this lock for the fingerprint sensor, but unfortunately it has been so unreliable. I've lost track of how many times I've tried reprogramming the lock to get the fingerprint sensor to work, but it just doesn't. That means I resort to using the physical buttons on the keypad, but the problem there is that the buttons show the where, so it's pretty easy to tell the numbers in your pin code, not what you're going for. What is nice is that you can punch in a bunch of random numbers either before or after your actual pin code. As long as the pin code itself is in the correct order, it will still work. The real deal breaker for me though, was that I cannot connect this lock natively to Home Assistant, which is my smart home hub of choice. Now there is a workaround where you can connect the lock to smart things and then smart things to Home Assistant. The problem with this though, is that the lock state is not very reliable. Now, the UTEC app allows you to lock or unlock and also allows you to set up an auto unlock feature so when you arrive back home, it in theory should unlock. Overall though, the app is buggy. It can be slow to respond or has a hard time connecting to the lock itself. Let's listen now to the sound that this lock makes. Next is the Yale Ashore SL with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This lock has a glass keypad without any physical buttons. Because there are no buttons, it has a nice, clean, modern aesthetic, which I really like. Also, because there are no physical buttons, the lock itself has held up really well over time. Honestly, it looks just as good as it did on the day I bought it about four years ago. There is no option, however, for a mechanical key with this particular model. If you were to get locked out because the batteries died, you can attach a nine volt battery to the lock to power it up just enough in order to get back inside your home. I have not been in this situation though. This lock also connects to my home via Wi-Fi using a separate connect by August module located a few feet away from my door. The lock works with Apple, Amazon, Google, and Home Assistant. This cost me a whopping $299 when I bought it. That price also included this lever door handle. Now I also have the door sense module installed. This required me to drill a hole in my door frame. This allows you to know if the door itself is open or closed in addition to knowing if the lock is locked or unlocked. You can use either the August or the Yale apps to control your smart lock and the experience in both apps is the same. From the app, you can set up auto unlock or auto lock and it should auto unlock once you arrive back at your home geofence, but I found the reliability of that feature to be spotty. Also, the connection between the connect by August Wi-Fi module and the lock itself is not always super reliable. This means at times I cannot control my lock remotely or the state of the lock is just incorrect. Let's listen now to the sound that this lock makes. I 
I have another Yale Ashore lock, but this one uses Z-Wave. It's the Yale Ashore 2 Z-Wave Smart Lock. It's essentially a newer model of the prior lock that I just showed you. This one has physical buttons instead of a glass keypad, which I find easier to punch in using your fingers. So far, I have not had any issues with wear and tear and the buttons showing where I've been pressing. I really like the clean aesthetic overall of this lock. I think it's a bit more handsome than the older version. The lock itself does have a different shape on the back. It's smaller in terms of the vertical length, so it takes up less space on your door, but it is a little bit thicker, probably because of the battery arrangement inside. Now this lock also does not have a mechanical key slot, so if the batteries were to die and you were locked out of the home, again, you can use a nine volt battery to power this thing back up and get inside. I got this with the Z-Wave module, but there are options to get Wi-Fi or Bluetooth only versions. Because I'm using Z-Wave, the Z-Wave hub does not need to be directly nearby the lock, like the Wi-Fi modules need to be near the other two locks that I already showed you. But of course, that does mean you need to have a Z-Wave hub. You could use a Ring Alarm if you happen to have one, or SmartThings if you have that hub in your home. In my case, I've added a Z-Wave hub via a USB to my Home Assistant. Unlike the Wi-Fi version, this does not have native support for Google, Amazon, or Apple HomeKit. But because I've connected it to Home Assistant, I am still able to take advantage of any one of those smart home platforms. This works with the Yale smartphone app, but your phone must be nearby the lock if you're trying to control it using the Yale app because it relies on a Bluetooth connection. By connecting it to a Z-Wave hub, you can control it from anywhere. This also supports auto lock and auto unlock features. What I really like about this lock is the clean, modern aesthetic coupled with the reliability of Z-Wave. Because this uses Z-Wave, the reliability has been rock solid. The lock never goes offline and it never reports the incorrect lock state. It also responds super fast to commands that I send through Home Assistant. I paid $190 for this lock. Let's listen now to the sound that this lock makes. All three of these smart locks replaced the existing deadbolt that was on my door and were able to be installed in about 20 minutes or less. Finally, let's look at an electronic keypad deadbolt from Quickset. This is not smart, but it does allow me to control the lock without needing a physical key. In my case, I'm using this on an outdoor shed that does not have traditional door handle openings. I tried different smart locks, but only this one would fit the space. If you're looking for key-free convenience, and don't care as much about the ability to lock or unlock remotely, include in home automations, or just see the status of the lock, then electronic digital keypad like this might be a great option for you. It's also way cheaper. This cost me just $39. If I were to do it all over again, I would go all in on Z-Wave based smart locks. The Yale Assure 2 with Z-Wave has just been so reliable for me. I never have to worry about it not responding to a lock or unlock command or reporting the incorrect state when I check out the lock either in the app or using Home Assistant. It does come with the added need for a Z-Wave hub, but for me, that was totally worth it to get this complete reliability. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you want to see how I use smart locks in my home automations. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the next one.